So coming in at my number five is Holiday, starring Emma Roberts and Luke Bracey playing the role of Sloane and Jackson. Fed up with being single on holidays, two strangers, Emma Roberts and Luke Bracey, agree to be each other's platonic plus ones all year long, only to catch real feelings along the way. So this came out this year at the end of October, I believe, October 28th is when I watched it, or the 29th. But this was a really good film to me just because it's like kind of Christmassy, but at the same time not really because they don't really focus on like presents and just Christmas alone. It follows them along every holiday throughout the year and things get complicated between them, but just the little things that happen, like it was a good film to me. So with this film, you see the plot line happen in other films as well with the whole situation between the two of them. But what's different about this is that it, you see like the complications that they come across through the whole film. And it's called Holidate, so you kind of figure out what that means when you watch the film. But just to like sum it up, it's just a date for the holidays. And you don't really see that in other films. Like they normally just go out, meet somebody and that's it. Rather than actually bring them home for the holidays and that's it. So yeah, um, I think that's a good watch. It's on Netflix. Coming in at number five is going to be His House on Netflix. It's a movie, it's like a horror thriller film. A refugee couple makes a harrowing escape from war-torn South Sudan, but then they struggle to adjust to their new life in an English town that has an evil lurking beneath the surface. It's a pretty crazy movie, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's it's a little trippy. So basically, it's like a haunted house um, that these two people move in, and they just start seeing things, obviously, monsters or whatever, and it's just super good. It's like a classic monster house type thing, like or like ha uh, haunted house type thing, but this movie's also deeper, because it's like also facing, like coming face to face with like their own personal trauma, but yeah, it's just done so good, and it has like, there's like, there's emotion to it. It's not just a scary movie with just scares. It's much deeper than that. I typically like that kind of stuff. It's like my favorite type of movies. But yeah, so this movie is really good. I think you guys should watch it. I think anybody should watch it. I don't know if it's got good reviews or not, but in my opinion, it was good. It's a, like I said, it's on Netflix. It's a Netflix uh, original. You guys should check that out. It's called His House. Coming in at my number four is Dash and Lily. It's on Netflix as well. It is another holiday film not necessarily or not necessarily necessarily holiday but it's like seasonal i guess like you don't just have to watch it in the winter just because it sounds like a christmas film or because it revolves around christmas but i think it really sets the mood for christmas and i know i'm saying film but it's a tv series actually so a whirlwind christmas romance builds as cynical dash and optimistic lily trade dares dreams and desires in the notebook they pass back and forth at locations around new york city so i really enjoyed this film just because you don't really see a show like this normally they go out meet somebody that's it and then they like continue to talk and this and that but they meet face to face whereas this they meet through a notebook because she puts a notebook in a library where I believe it's her cousin works some she's related to him in some way and then he finds it and then he does this he like reads it does the dare and just keeps going along and it goes back and forth but this was a really cute show to me I kind of I want to say binged it in a way just because I it's like okay well what happens next what happens next like I want to know and it's just like so heartwarming I feel but at the same time like you want like you you're invested in them if that makes sense like you want to know what happens between them but yeah you want to see how there's how their story ends if this sounds interesting to you i would recommend it it's on netflix all right coming in at number four is going to be fireball visitors from darker worlds uh it's on apple tv plus and it's a documentary so from directors werner herzog and clive uh oppenheimer this remarkable journey across our planet and universe explores how meteorites shooting stars and deep impacts have awoken our wonder about other realms and make us rethink our destinies. So this one was really good. For one, it's such high quality. And if you have Apple Plus, that's kind of what you get is the high quality. Like everything's super high quality. There's the best or the biggest names that are working on these stuff. It's not always the best content. It's like sometimes it's a little, eh, but you're, you're always getting quality. That's what you know you're getting from them. And this documentary is so high quality. It's so good. I love everything about it. I'm a big fan of like stars and meteors and planets and all that stuff already. So this in itself was just all like, it was right on my alley. Um, and I like documentaries and stuff. So I like this film because it, it shows different cultures and stuff and, and just like how they relate to 
the fireballs and stuff and like what they think about the sky and the world from I think even like uh, in Mexico when they do like the Day of the Dead like that like that whole section of the documentary was super cool. Um, I just like I said it just looks very good. Everything about it just looks very good, like very high quality. And, and I think they said something about in Mexico when they do the day that or celebration of the, of the Day of the Dead, they do uh, like some rituals, some like dances and like performances. Um, and I think they said like the fireball ritual is what uh, they called it in the in the film. But yeah, th this film just goes around the world to different places and kind of shows the impacts. Um, or beliefs and stuff of these fireballs and you know just stuff coming from the sky and it also ties in like I said with beliefs and stuff so it kind of ties in also with um, like religious beliefs and you know things falling for certain reasons or whatever um, but besides just the religious stuff if you're not into that like I said this is just really good for like a science uh, documentary and just being interested in the sky above and what comes you know from outside this planet and comes to the planet but like I said that's gonna be Fireball, Apple TV Plus. You should check that out if you're into documentaries about the sky, what comes from the sky. Okay, coming in at number three, you guys have probably heard about it if you're on TikTok because it was really big and it's the movie Clouds, it's on Disney Plus. Teenager Zach Sobiek forms the music group of From Handshake and records the inspirational hit single Clouds. So this is based on a true story, if I am remembering correct, because the teenager Zach was a real, like he was a real person. And then they just made this film after him. He forms the music group, A Firm Handshake with his best friend that he's known since they were young and he has cancer. So I've seen this going around TikTok and I'm just like, okay, that sounds like good. People are crying on it. You know how, I don't know if I'm the only one, but you know how you just want to watch a movie that'll make you cry? Like that's how I felt. So that's why I wanted to watch it. So. I cried like a little baby, you guys. Like, I was sitting here on the couch all alone. Matt was in the other room and I was just like hysterically crying. And I had to like, it was a very ugly cry, needless to say. But yeah, this is a really good one. Like, there's no film like it, I feel, ever. But maybe I just haven't watched that many films like this. Yeah, I really like this. Just how it was set up and the characters. I think they played their parts very well and how you had an emotional care, like, um, an emotional connection with the characters of Zack and like people all the people that was around him supporting him and helping him and just how he's he came like all this way you know so if you want a movie a sad movie to watch but also a happy movie at the same time and you're in the mood to cry this is the film for you it's on Disney plus it's called clouds coming in at number three is going to be charm city kings it's an HBO max it's a movie I've been wanting to watch this one for a minute but I just never did but this one is really good. I really enjoy this one. This one has uh, Meek Mill in it. If you guys know hip hop, listen to hip hop and know who that is. But anyways, Charm City Kings is a 2020 American drama film directed by Angel Manuel Soto from a screenplay by Sherman Payne and a story by Kirk Sullivan. Uh, so Chris Boyd and Barry Jenkins. It is a film adaption of the documentary 12 O'Clock Boys by Lofty Nathan. So that doesn't even tell you what it's about really. <laughs> but basically it's about this kid um, and his group of friends, or his two other friends. They kind of just, living like regular kids, but like in the hood, there is this uh, event that goes on during the summer, like every night or every Friday night or something like that, where people bring their bikes out, uh, you know, meaning motorcycles, dirt bikes, quads, all that kind of stuff. And they just roam the streets, you know, and they, they just put on like performances. Everyone does uh, tricks and all that kind of stuff. And these kids are really into it and, and they want to, you know, they look up to this one crew and all that. but. Anyways, the main character ends up stumbling into a relationship basically with one of the, like the main guy that he looks up to, which is Meek Mill. So Meek Mill ends up saying, you know, you can have this bike here, you just gotta fix it up, make it legit. And they end up forming a little relationship and all that. Things end up happening, you know, street stuff end up happening. And, and that's kind of where the twist of the movie comes, I guess, is like things start to get messed up because of the street stuff. And yeah, and there's, like I said, there's a twist to it and there's emotion to it. There's definitely emotion to it, but it's, it's a feel good movie for the most part. Like for most of the movie, it's a feel good movie, but then there, there is emotion to it. It's a, it, it, like, it, it's a drama, but nonetheless, it's really good. It's like a gritty coming of age film. I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. HBO Max, if you guys have it, it's called Charm City Kings. All right, coming in at my number two is the movie After We Collided. It's a part of a series. Um, the first movie is After, so this is the second part to that. It's not on any streaming service that I know of yet. So if you can get your hands on watching this, I really recommend it. Tessa, is the main character. So she finds herself struggling with her complicated relationship with Hardin. She faces a dilemma that could change their lives forever. 
So if, if you haven't seen this, I really recommend you watch the first movie. It's called After. It was on Hulu or Netflix. I don't remember. I think it was on Netflix. So she was in a relationship. Tessa was in a relationship with Harden and things got complicated and pretty much they reunite in this movie because obviously that would be the case if they didn't there wouldn't be a second movie. This is really good too, like, I cried on this one too. If I'm being honest, I watched this and Clouds on the same night, and I went from crying at the end of this movie, well not the end, but towards the end, to watching Clouds, and that was just all bad for me. Yeah, this is just a really good movie. Like, I invested my time in the first one, and I really was waiting for this one, and it finally came out, and now after watching it, I'm like, I need the third movie. It's just so good. It, like with all the drama and the love story, I guess you could say, but like I could rewatch this series again. Like I normally don't do that, but with this, I definitely would. So yeah, if you watched the first one and haven't watched this one yet, definitely do that. And if you haven't watched the first one, definitely do that first. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. So again, after we collided, it's not on any streaming service that I know of, but yeah. Okay, and coming in at number two is going to be Bruce Springsteen's Letter to You. Uh, it's a documentary, it's on Apple TV Plus, and this one was really, really good. I haven't listened to, I'm a, I am a Bruce Springsteen fan, but I haven't listened to anything of his that's like recent, you know? I've, I've definitely listened to the older stuff, you know, some of those classics for sure. Um, and I'm a big fan, but I didn't really I haven't really listened to any any of his recent stuff I don't know if he even has recent stuff or this is just like a comeback for him He basically he put out an album called letter to you and a documentary that goes hand in hand So the documentary is basically just the making of the album and, it, and you kind of just get uh, Some insight I guess on the process of making it and his reasonings and thoughts behind so, Like the music and you know some of the lyrics and all that stuff so this one was just really good because the album is fire I don't know if you guys have listened to it or if any of you guys are Bruce Springsteen's uh, Bruce Springsteen's fans but if you are and you haven't heard this yet this is one to listen to it's really good that's like a big plus obviously if the album that, like the music has to be good or the documentary is not gonna be very good so the music was good they're you know performing it and yeah, and just the stories and stuff that he was just telling and, and the reasoning behind this and behind that. I just thought it was good overall. So yeah, that to me in itself is really good. I love music um, and I love hearing backstories. So this right here was right up my alley. This was perfect for me. Um, but yeah, not much to say. It's just, a, like I said, it's just a documentary that goes alongside his album that he put out. And if you're into his music or anything like that or into his story, I guess, or his life a little bit, you guys should check it out. It's uh, Bruce Springsteen's Letter to You documentary on Apple TV Plus. All right, so coming in at my number one is American Horror Story, the fifth season, 1989. Um, this is on Hulu and Netflix now. I believe it's on Hulu, but it's definitely on Netflix. Um, this is a must watch in my opinion. You don't have to watch the previous four seasons to understand this one just because every season is about something different. People do say things connect from the other seasons, but with this I didn't see any connections with the past unless I'm just not like obsessed with the show to even like really realize that. But this is definitely, I feel like whenever American Horror Story comes out, it will always be on my top, it'll always be like in the top spot unless something better comes along, it'll be my number two, but that's it. But yeah, with, with this season, 1989, it's like a retro kind of vibe. So these young adults, teenagers become counselors at this new camp called Camp Redwood. It's not really a new camp, it's reopening for the first time in many years because of what, what it's known for, the reputation of the camp pretty much, of what happened when it was open years ago. But freaky things happen and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's definitely a must watch um, because it's kind of like, wait, how was that even possible? Like. How are they doing that? Why can they do that? At the same time, there is a killer on the loose when they find, so yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't wanna give too much away and I saying this one thing is gonna like give it away, but I'm not gonna say it. So all you have to know is that they become counselors at this new camp that's gonna reopen. Pretty soon they arrive the day before the kids show up and a killer's on the loose that night and so many bad things happen. It's just like, it's not spooky, but it's kind of like a thriller and scary because I was watching it in the dark for like really late at night and I'm just like, I need a light on just because I get scared. If you like American Horror Story and you haven't seen this one yet, I definitely recommend watching it. And if you don't watch American Horror Story, regardless of if you've seen the previous seasons or not, definitely give this a watch. Try it out, feel, take a feel for it. If you try it out, I really hope you like it too. But yeah, that's my top five. Coming in at number one for me is, uh 
the Fresh Prince reunion. I enjoyed it so much. It was just a reunion show, <laughs> one episode, but it was so good. It's just good memories, you know? It's just seeing them get back together. Like I said, it's, it's, it's just a feel good uh, reunion. You know, if you were a fan of that show, or a fan of Will Smith or whatever, like you're gonna wanna watch it. It's it's so good. They go back on set and they just sit down in the living room and then they just tell stories. They show clips from, you know, the episodes and they kind of just show some embarrassing moments they did or some mess ups that they did like when they first started like season one and all this. And then it gets emotional too because they bring the original Aunt Viv on there and she gets to see everybody and her and Will Smith haven't talked in I think they said 27 years or, or like something crazy, right? And they kind of hash things out and kind of try to understand each other's uh, side, you know, cause they had a falling out and there was a little bit of tears in there. You know, she was saying, well, I'm not gonna say what she said or what he said, but cause you guys should check it out. But yeah, it, it was just really good. Like I would almost watch it again. I probably won't, but I almost would watch it again just because I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed seeing all the old clips, all the old memories of the show and all that, and seeing what they think about it, seeing where they're at now in their life. It was just super cool to watch and see. So yeah, like I said the last time, there's not much to say about this one. It's just a reunion about, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So if you guys are into the show, um, maybe you grew up watching it, or you're just, you like Will Smith or something like that, I think you guys should check it out. Like I said, it's on HBO Max and yeah, that's my number one. All right, so now that we have given you our top five each of November, we are going to give you our final counts as of now. So. And this is almost the end of the vid. We got one more month to go. One more month to go. And this is, I guess, like season one of our top five, whatever, because next year it's going to be a whole new count yeah. and a whole new everything. Except season one wasn't a full year yeah this is like a half a season for mm -hmm. season one because we started in when june june uh, but anyways let's get to those counts okay so apple i had two it's gonna stay at two netflix i had 22 adding three from today it's 25 hulu three it's gonna stay there hbo max is at five um staying there as well and disney plus gets on the board with one all right so the counts for me is going to be Apple at 10, adding two more this time, putting it up to 12. Netflix was at 11, now it's at 12. And then Hulu remains at six. Didn't really watch nothing on Hulu this month uh, or last month. And then HBO Max added two more, bringing it from four to six. And Amazon still at one, didn't add anything to it. Yeah, so as you can see from these lists, mine are a little more balanced. Uh, hers is very dominant with, from Netflix. Very, very dominant. That's because in the very beginning, I was just watching Netflix. I didn't open. I feel like you still are, though. I still, well, right now I'm on one show on Netflix, but yeah. I didn't, like, really open my mind to other streaming services just because I've always known Netflix. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, if you, if you guys can see these, hers and mine, it's a little one-sided for her. Mine's a little more balanced. <laughs> um, it's actually a close race, though, if you look at mine. Apple and Netflix are tied. Yeah, and Hulu and HBO are tied. Yeah, but for someone that's gonna take the crown, this last month is very important. And you only have five to give. Yeah, so we'll see who, who takes the crown. I don't know if it's gonna be Apple, just because I don't know. I'm gonna say- They don't release as much stuff. Netflix. Yeah, so I mean, obviously Netflix is gonna take the crown for, for you. For you. But it might also take the crown for me. Um, but I like all the streaming services, honestly, pretty much. Yeah. Like the main ones that we use. But anyways, though, that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely leave a like. We appreciate that. And also, subscribe if you haven't already. And also... Drop a comment. Definitely comment down below your top five or your top anything, even if it was just your favorite show, one show or movie of the month. Let us know down below because there's chances are we maybe haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. And we would like to watch it because we're into anything that's good. So we'd like to check it out, but yeah. And since we're here already, we need to start getting into Flashback Fridays. So if you have a Flashback Friday movie for us to watch yeah. and review on it, drop it down in the comments so we can do that as well. Yeah, is, oh yeah, and also, we didn't say it in the beginning because we don't do an intro to this video, but we haven't been here. It's it, the last time we posted, weeks. yeah, it was the last October top five. Yeah, but now we're gonna try to get back into a groove of doing stuff, we got videos coming out on this channel. Uh, very soon after this one. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And like I said, we appreciate you guys for watching. But anyways, my name's Matt. My name's Nicole. And we'll catch you next time.